Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up your ozone generator, what it actually looks like to get started with creating pure concentrations of ozone right from your own home or wherever you're at. So there's a few elements that are needed for every form of ozone using this ozone generator. You're going to need your oxygen tank, your oxygen tank regulator, which affixes onto here. This is some silicone tubing that's going to connect from the oxygen tank to the ozone generator. And then from there, there's going to be some sort of accessory that connects to the ozone generator. Uh, regardless of the accessory that you have, could be an ozone water bubbler, it could be an oil bubbler, could be a bag like this. They're always going to connect to right to the top of the machine here. So every time you're capturing ozone or uh, pushing it into something, it's always going to connect right here. So the first step is the oxygen tank. I have another video that goes into oxygen tanks in a little bit more depth of the two different kinds, how you're going to get them, all that type of stuff. I'm just going to be real brief with this one in this video, but this is the 540 oxygen tank. This is very easy to get. You can get this from a weld supply shop or Praxair or Airgas. All you have to do is Google Praxair Airgas weld supply shop near me. Find some locations, call ahead maybe just to make sure that they do have the oxygen tank there. But then you're gonna go into the facility and say, hey, I need a 540 oxygen tank, size R or a 40 cubic foot oxygen tank for ozone, my ozone purification system. And then they'll come out and give you an oxygen tank. It costs about 100 to $150 depending on where you live, you know, there's differences between Los Angeles and Boise, Idaho, uh, just in prices. So that'll be reflected accordingly. But this is the 540 oxygen tank, and you're going to ask for a 40 cubic foot oxygen tank. It's very easy to get. Most people get intimidated by an oxygen tank, but that's just because you've never used one before. Once you get one, it's pretty inert. It's totally fine, easy to use, all that kind of stuff. This is the oxygen tank regulator. The important thing is that this is a 540 oxygen tank regulator. If you're on your our website, You'll notice that there's the 540 and the 870. I mostly talk about the 540 because that's what almost everybody uses. It's 99.9% .9 oxygen. So I recommend getting the 540 tank and with that, the accompanying 540 regulator. The 540 regulator goes onto the oxygen tank and this is what actually allows us to change the flow rate of the oxygen coming out of the tank, which is gonna help us to determine uh, the, the strength of the ozone gas that's coming from here. So this all makes sense in a second. Uh, it, I know it seems like a lot, but it's not too much. Just bear with me for a couple minutes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is connect my regulator to the oxygen tank. I'm gonna put the stem into the side here, and then I'm gonna finger tighten it using this nut right here. So I'm gonna tighten that down. It might need a little bit of additional tightening if that's the case, go ahead and do this. Um, you'll know if it's not tight enough or that if it was put on incorrectly because you'll hear a little hissing sound, that's oxygen escaping the regulator. Um, also make sure that this regulator is set to zero before you put it on because if it's not set to zero, you'll hear that hissing sound and it might make you think it's leaking, but it's not. There's two ways to open up this tank. Well, there's two things you have to do in order to get oxygen out of this tank. The first is to open up the valve here. What this does is this allows the oxygen pressure to come in and pressurize this regulator here. So now the oxygen is flowing from the tank outside of this valve into the regulator. No oxygen is coming out of the regulator yet though because that's how I, I, I can adjust it here using the knob on the side of the regulator. And this adjusts what's called the flow rate. That's how fast the gas is coming out of the tank here. And then my oxygen setup is complete. From there, I'm going to connect it to my ozone generator. So I'm going to take this silicone tubing, connect one end to the oxygen tank regulator here, and just push it up over that. The other end is going to go into the O2 in on the ozone generator. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there. And now I have my oxygen tank set up with my ozone generator, and I'm ready to make ozone. You'll notice on the ozone generator, there are different concentrations that you can choose. These are the strengths of ozone. A lot of people call it micrograms per milliliter. That's the more scientific term. But if you want to just say gamma, a lot of people say that as well. So for example, on this machine, the Stratus 3.0 ozone generator, we have a concentration range of seven up to 71. Your machine might differ a little bit and that's okay. We calibrate each of these machines based on the concentration readings that we get here at our office. So we quality assure these to make sure that your machine has a concentration it says it is. So what's the advantage of having a Stratus 3.0 ozone generator? Well, it produces pure concentrations of ozone oxygen mixtures. We're using 99.9% .9 oxygen and laboratory grade materials inside the machine to prevent any uh, impurities or any oxidation of un unwanted components. If you were to use like say an inexpensive generator, they might use brass fittings or different reactors inside the, the machine. 
uh, that are not resistant to ozone. Ozone is a very strong oxidant, meaning that it likes to break materials down and it does so very rapidly. So you have to use all materials that are 100% resistant to ozone in order to produce uh, oxygen ozone mixtures that don't have any impurities in it. So that's why we have the Stratus 3.0 ozone generator is because it produces very pure concentrations of ozone oxygen mixtures. And the reason I say ozone oxygen mixtures is because it's a lot of the gas is actually still oxygen. Only a part of it is ozone. So that's why I keep on saying oxygen ozone mixtures. So going back to this chart, you're gonna notice that there's two columns. One column will say gamma or micrograms per milliliter, and the other column will say setting. So this is how you're gonna choose the strength of the ozone gas that you want. And there's a lot more details on this that you can find. But essentially, say I want a concentration of 39. I go on here and I see there's the concentration of 39 and I see setting eight corresponding with that. So I'm gonna to go to my regulator. I'm gonna set this to setting eight. And now the ozone that's gonna come out of this machine is at a concentration of 39. Or just to double down on this and, and give some more explanation. Um, say I want the concentration of 13 right here. I look over here, I see that corresponds to setting three on the oxygen tank regulator. Once I set this to three, that'll start creating the ozone at a gamma of 13. However, there's one more step that we have to go through. This last step is that your ozone generator needs to be turned on and your oxygen tank needs to be flowing. If your oxygen tank is flowing, but your ozone generator is not on, and it'll be blue if it's on, it's just pushing oxygen into the air. No ozone is being made because this machine is off. And on the flip side of that, if this machine is on, but no oxygen is flowing, it's not doing anything. It's not making any ozone. It's just sitting there uh, being all pretty. So um, both the ozone generator and the oxygen tank need to be flowing and on in order for ozone to be created. So that brings us to the last step of the process, which is attaching an accessory to the ozone generator. In this example, I have the three chambered ozone bag. There are three chambers to this bag, so I can choose how much ozone gas I want. So say I want 200 ml, I just pinch here. If I want 400 ml, I pinch here. If I want 750 ml, I don't pinch anywhere. I just let it fill up. And that's how I measure out the amount of ozone gas that I have. It might be a water bubbler, it might be an oil bubbler, it could be any accessory that connects to here. This is just one example of them. So with the three chamber bag, let's say I wanna fill this two, to 200 ml with a concentration of 24. So I see on my top chart here that to get a concentration of 24, my oxygen tank regulator needs to be set to five. So the first thing I'm gonna do, um, I'm actually gonna unscrew this. I'm gonna set this to five. So I have this set to five. I'm gonna turn on my ozone generator. I'm gonna connect my bag here and then I'm gonna clamp it off at the 200 mark and this will start to fill up. So right now ozone gas is being created. The oxygen is coming out of here. The ozone generator is breaking apart the oxygen molecule and controlling the rate at which it combines back into ozone. That is coming into our nifty little bag here and it's a little bit difficult to see but you can see it filling up slightly. You don't wanna fill this bag up like a balloon. It's not made to do that. It's just meant to be slightly rigid. So we're almost at 200 ml. So the first thing I'm gonna do, once I have the amount of ozone that I want, I'm gonna switch this to zero. I'm gonna clamp my bag off, turn my machine off. The purpose of this clamp is just to prevent uh, the ozone gas from coming out of the bag until I wanna utilize it. Uh, just make sure that this clamp is not clamping down when you're trying to fill it up because obviously no ozone will come out of here and then it'll spit off on this side. So it'll push off this, this piece of tubing on the side of the machine here. But now this bag is ready to be utilized for whatever you wanna use it. So that is the basics of how you set up the Stratus 3.0. I hope it was helpful. Check out our website. Check out our website, www.simplyo3.com. We have uh, um, people who are very knowledgeable on ozone that would love to talk with you as well, that you can give us a call. Our website, our, our phone number is on the website as well as our email, and we would love to work with you. So feel free to ask us questions and we'll help in any way we can.